In the last lesson you learned to make these round shapes on the ends which can be useful in many applications but we're going to take it to the next level and to a much more complex application of these and you need to learn to make round ball shapes uh, so that you would be actually rounding it on both ends and then making a series of them and this will develop your skill and ability to a much higher extent on being able to do rounded shapes on the lathe. So what we'll do first is we'll start out with our regular piece of stock here and I've just taken a skin cut to remove the initial layer and the first thing what we'll do is uh, we're going to have to make some partitions and because we have these different balls here so we'll have to make some marks on our piece here to indicate where those are going to be and what we'll do is we'll make them approximately uh, the width of our graver so I'll put, place my graver here to measure, to measure out a, a, a little distance and just with a little bit of room on each side and I'll make an initial indentation and then I'll mark off another piece of approximately equal we're not have to be exact here because we're just working here to um, develop the technique I mean if you were doing a, an actual piece of work you'd want to have much more accurate measurements but we're just practicing right now and we'll do like one more they don't have to be too deep just a just an indentation the depth is going to be approximately the depth of what you see here between the two round balls and we'll start by taking a well first we need to bring the T-rest up closer so we have proper support and first we'll start by rounding off the end like we've done in our previous exercise in fact it might be helpful just to turn your T-rest at an angle so, to help with that rounding I'm turning around a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and start on the other side. Now the angle of your graver should be pointing straight ahead so you have a, an exactly perpendicular line from here up your graver all the way to the end of the work and across and then just press forward into the groove and then start to round from the other direction and then go back and forth from side to side and work your circular pattern into that section Let's turn this around a little bit some more move the T-rest back just slightly This gives you a great opportunity to practice your rounding techniques, rounding in both directions basically. So 
So we need to lower this just a little bit. Also gives you practice in working with your T-rest too. It's a little bit high. Let's go a bit lower. So we need to round that end off and to get rid of that pip too. Alright, that first ball looks pretty good and let's start working on the second one. Alright, let's start on our next shape here. Let's see, need to adjust our T-wrist again. Probably need to move them just a little bit closer. And I always have that proper support. Also, the deeper the groove that you make with your um, parting tool, the more round you can make your shape because you can go deeper on, with the roundness. In fact, I'm going to probably add a little bit of depth in here. You don't want to cut too deep because then you won't have any stability between the, between the sections and because brass is a soft metal it'll tend to flex and then you won't be able to uh, work on your piece because it'll start waddling on you. I'm just taking light cuts in general here so it doesn't have to be really, um, you don't have to put a lot of pressure into it. Especially if your graver is sharp then you don't have to worry about ha having to press too hard. And it should go pretty smoothly if you have a sharp graver. And there you have it. Gives you a good example of how that works. And uh, you can practice yourself using up a couple sets of stocks. And what's really important also is to try to make them all similar in their symmetrical size. Uh, you don't want one that's real big and fat, and one that's real skinny and so forth. So you want to try to develop some uniformity and consistency in your work as you go from, from one working one ball 
to the next to the next and so forth so practice that and that will really get your skills going and develop well in making round shapes on the, with the graver if you practice enough you'll, you can make several pieces like this here's one that has quite a few well, round circular shapes in a row our little balls and here's another one uh, if you notice that the cylindrical shapes or sizes on this one are consistently the same and and these are too and if you look closely that the, that, the, that these spherical shapes are a little bit different on each one but they're consistent to the size of the next one on the same piece so that's what you want to have really consistency in the same piece uh, you can start out with one size then try to duplicate that size all the way through